If I take this little sample SGML file that I created after copying it from the pros post, what I'm interested in is the, the translatable text that's in the S elements. So there's the English, there's the Vietnamese, there's the English, the Vietnamese, the English, the Vietnamese. That's all I'm interested in. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to get at this and turn it into a translation memory by using the um, bilingual Excel filter and an Excel file. There are many ways to crack this, but this is what I'm going to show you. So to start off with, we create the custom file type. So what I do is I come over to my file types. Perhaps I should just do that a little bit slower. Excuse me, file options, file types, and I click on new. And then I'm going to create an XML file type. I'll just pick the XML embedded content. I could pick the other one. It doesn't make any difference. It's very simple, this file type. I'm going to call it stuff. And I'm also going to call the file type identifier the same name. I do this because then that little orange tab, when you open up the file, will display the name and I'm, I can be sure that I've used the right file type. So I change the wildcard expression because it's not an XML file, it's an SGML file. Well, actually, that's also XML, but it's close enough. And I'm going to define my settings based on that very file. So I'll browse to the HTML file, and this allows me to bring in all the rules. So I'll just finish it at this point. So that's my file type created. Now at the moment, it's going to be bringing in far more than I want, because I don't want anything else other than what's in this S element at the top. So I'm just going to remove all of these rules down here. Change this one to always translatable and just to be on the safe side I probably don't need it but to be on the safe side it's a force of habit really I'll just say that anything else is not translatable so what we're doing is we're saying don't translate anything and then only translate what's in that S so we say okay if I open the file now I can use any language for this exercise. It doesn't have to be the correct languages. And what I've got is a file that's containing all our source content, just what was in those S elements. So I've got the English, the Vietnamese, the English, the Vietnamese, the English, the Vietnamese. So at this point I press Control S just to save the file and that saved it. And now I'm going to close it because I don't need that now for this part, this next part of the exercise. What I'm going to do is come back to here and now you'll see in this folder I have in addition to the SGML file I've got an SGLXLIF file and the SGLProj file. What I'm interested in is the SGLXLIF file. So I'll come down here and I'm going to start up in the Trader Studio 2015 apps the SGLXLIF converter for Microsoft Office. It looks like this. Now the default setting is to convert to Microsoft Word but this little tool allows you to convert to Excel as well. Um, I can set the width of the source target column so I'm going to make that something smaller just so that it doesn't fill up the whole page. Um, go back to here again you can see this changes now to convert to Microsoft Excel and then I just take that SGLXLIF file drop it into there like that and convert and then close it. And you'll see now I have a little Excel file. So now I come back to Excel and that's what it looks like. So I have the segment IDs, the source text, the target text and the comment text. And what I'm actually going to do for the purpose of this exercise is I'm going to use the segment ID number to move the target in line with the source by determining whether or not it's an even number or an odd number. And that's what that little formula, which I'm just going to copy, does. So if I put this into here like that, and press the return key, you can see what's happened. It's looked down here and it said, okay, that's an even number, so I'm going to put that in there. You can see if I copy that down to the next cell, this time it doesn't put anything in there because number three is not an even number, it's an odd number. So I can do them all. 
and that's what happens. So I now have the target next to the source, which is really cool. So what I do next is I just copy all of that text to the clipboard or copy, and then I'm going to paste it as values because now I want to get rid of the formula. Ooh. Ah, there's a thing, just let me come back to that. One of the things to note is that this is actually a protected shape, a protected sheet. So to unprotect it, I just right click, unprotect sheet, and now I should be able to, if I copy it again, paste the values. Okay, so now I don't have formally, now I just have the text, which is perfect. So what I do next is I will just Click on filter to get this little drop downs here, and then I'm just going to filter and sort A to Z or Z to A even. Doesn't really matter. And then I'm just going to delete the rows which don't have any target text in them. And that leaves me now with source, target, source, target, source, target. If I want them to be in order, which might be handy, I can just re sort them because I can, I can use the segment ID again. So that brings them back into the right order. So I can just save that file and that's it. I'm now ready to go in the format that I wanted. So I've got source target, source target, source target. So what I do next is I close that file and I come back to studio, go back to my op file options. But this time I'm going to look at the Excel, bilingual Excel file type. And I want to make sure that my source column is B, my translation column is C, which is what it is. That's because the ID, if you remember, was the first column. There is a column heading on the top, but there's no other information in the file at all. So I'm not interested in anything else, only these two. So that'll do me. So now I open them up and I open up the XML file. This time the language is important. So I'm going um, English. I've forgotten which way around it was. Let's just open it up a second. English to Vietnamese. Okay. So I'm going to go English, whichever one I want. I say UK to Vietnamese. And say OK. So that opens up my file using the bilingual Excel file type, which you can see from there. And I've got source target, source target. So all I do next is I go to my project settings. I create a new translation memory. And I'll put it in the same folder as my stuff folder there. I'm going to call this English to Vietnamese. And finish there. So I click on OK. And then I just run a batch task to update the main translation memories. So I go next, finish, close, reopen it. Um, and I made a basic mistake, which I'm gonna leave in this video because I'm sure many people do this. I click back on the batch test again because it looks like there's nothing there. If you'll notice, None of those segments were confirmed. So when I click on here, segment status, I should make draft and not translated. In fact, it's just not translated really. And finish and close. This time when I open it, I should have some matches in the TM. Yes. So there we go. There's the first one. There's the second one. And there's the third one. So that's it. I now have my, my translation from that HTML file sorted out using Excel and the, bilingu and the bilingual Excel filter to create my SDL TM, which is perfect. And if I did actually want to have um, a TMX from it, I could just export at that point, browse, leave that in stuff again, and this is my EN to BI TMX. Save it, and it could be a Charles 2007 TMX format if I wanted to by checking that box, I'll just click finish, close, and okay. And if I come back over here now, now I've also got a TMX file in there. And if I look at that in my text editor, there we go. 
So there's a number of different ways you could actually handle that file. That's how you could do it using the bilingual Excel filter and messing around a bit with Excel. Hope that was useful.